I know that this album's been out for hmm, a hot minute now. I think it's been out for about a month at this point. But Ringo Starr's new album, which I don't think anybody was really asking for, but we got anyway. So uh, I think that was album number 20. If we, like, don't count compilations and live albums. I think it's 20th studio album, if I'm not mistaken. Could be wrong. Don't quote me on that in case I'm wrong. But the new one is called um, What's My Name, which we all know is a joke with his thing he's done on stage with the all-stars of calling out to the audience, What's my name? We all have to yell Ringo back, back and forth. The second I heard that that's what he named his album, I was just like, oh cringe but I mean at the same time it's so him <laughs> it's so perfect but um my goodness I wasn't really sure what to expect since the last album I mean let's be real I expected a shit show last time and it actually ended up being decent I mean not a great album but I mean by Ringo standards that was probably the best album he's done since the Mark Hudson years. So, I mean, I figured odds are it was a fluke and the next one will probably suck. I wasn't wrong, but I mean, uh, goodness, it, it's not the worst thing I've ever heard. I mean, it's not why not bad. It's not postcards from the boys bad. Was that even with that? No. Postcards from Paradise. Postcards from the Boys was the book. Postcards from Paradise was the album. That shows how much attention I paid to that album. Uh, it's not... Hmm, there was like another one in there too that my brain has like totally just decided to etch-a-sketch out because it was so bad. But I know there was another one in there too. Yeah, it's not as bad as any of those. So, I mean, if you're expecting it to be that level, no, 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 don't, don't be terrified. It's, it's better than that. It's not as good as the last one, but it's not as bad as the few that came before it. So, I mean, it's kind of mediocre. So, if you want the TLDR version of this review, there you go. If you want the expanded thing, I will go through and listen to it track by track. Unfortunately, I can't play them here on YouTube for you or it will get copyright claimed. So I'm gonna have my headphones on as I do it and pause and make my commentary since I got lazy and didn't write it out beforehand like I was going to. I will stop in between each track just so I can pull up the song and everything. But, um, Otherwise, yeah, I will just, like, hit pause and make my comments and go back to listening to it. But I have listened to the album in full all of once before now. I had listened to it in bits and pieces prior to that, but not the whole thing. I've only listened to the whole thing beginning to end one time prior to now, and that was with a friend. And the whole time I was like, it might not be that bad because his last one wasn't that bad. And, like, almost instantly I had that moment of, Dad, you're embarrassing me in front of my friends! But it's like, that sensation is what listening to this first time through with a friend felt like. It's like, I love you, but oh my god, you're embarrassing me right now! There's your TLDR version. So anyways. First track is Gotta Get Up to Let- uh, Sorry. Gotta get up to get down. It's kind of a tongue twister. Let me pull up the track real quick. Okay, got the track pulled up on YouTube and everything. Um, this track was with Joe Walsh, his new brother-in-law, since he married Barbara's sister. Uh, I can't remember if that already happened at the time of the last album or not, but in case that's new since then, there you go. Factoid, that's why he's like joined at the hip with Joe Walsh now. They are literally family at this point. What can you do? But uh, anyways, um, it was another one of those tracks where hmm, he was having dinner with famous people and heard a certain phrase and decided, I'm going to make a song out of that. Just that title. It was the very same thing that happened with Back Off Boogaloo. And actually, the intro to the song kind of reminds me of it. So I'm wondering if that was intentional because it kind of does have that same vibe. It's not exactly the same thing, but if you listen to it, 
Um, like I said, all the tracks from the album are up on YouTube, so all you gotta do is type them in, search them. They're on his own channel, man, so go listen to them. At least he gets some money that way. But, um, but it does have that vibe of Back Off Boogaloo to it. So it's kind of interesting on that scale, and the lyrics are in spots kind of almost as nonsensical, uh, but not all of it. The first verse, I noticed some interestingness with this, because the first time through listening to the album, the lyrics on this were so fast that it was hard to like take them all in just listening to it without the words in front of me on a page, so I went and googled them after. And I was like, oh, interesting, interesting, specifically on the first verse, because, um, when I looked them up that day, they said one thing, when I look them up today, they say another, yet listening to the track, I feel like it's still another, so, just saying, um, the first verse goes, Unlawful man, he just works out on Twitter. Uh, just gaining fat, yeah, he's not getting thinner. Yes, Ringo is very proud of this particular lyric. I don't know why they have behind the scenes footage of the recording of this song, and he is like legitimately proud of this line. I can't tell if he's being sarcastic or not. I think he's actually being serious. I'm like, the sad thing is, you know, for his own songwriting skills, that might be the best lyric he's ever written. <laughs> oh, goodness, hold on. Okay, but anyway, so it was like the first week or two, every lyric site said unlawful man is the first part. Now just about everywhere it's been changed to I know a man. But if you listen to it in the song, it is very much unlawful man. Who is an unlawful man we all can think of who works out on Twitter, who's just getting fatter and not getting thinner? And then the next line is, looks out the window and what does he see? He don't see nothing, he got no one to please. And I'm like, did Ringo just go political? Holy crap, false. I didn't think I'd ever see the day. I mean, I know he's like a Brexit supporter and everything, so if anything, I would have possibly mistaken him for a certain Cheeto supporter, but... Not so much, but yeah, um, let me, let me turn on the track, listen for anything I want to comment on for the next verse. That was my other comment with it. While all of the lyrics pages say he just works out on Twitter, and while even in the making of it says works out on Twitter, you listen to that track and tell me it doesn't sound like he's saying wax out on Twitter, which actually would seem even more appropriate for the comparison that I think is being made here, but you know, just saying, just saying.
Okay, so <laughs> I definitely forgot about where Joe Walsh very suddenly, with no warning, comes into the song and is practically rapping his verse of it. Um, so his verse goes, <laughs> everybody's on the internet, what's up with that? Your body just waiting for your brain to come back. Can't be cool just sitting around, you gotta get up to get down. It's like, I hate to go there and be that person, but this is like the the height of the okay boomer meme. Like, really though, th this whole song could be summed up is that meme. I just, I'm sorry, but Joe Walsh's verses in this are like the worst parts of the whole song. I'm just like, oh, stop, stop. Like, oh, what are you doing? Holy crap. This actually wouldn't be a terrible song if not for that. I could actually hang with it way easier, but what can you do? Apparently Ringo thought it was cool, so on it goes. So the keyboard parts in this, <clears throat> even though I know it's not him, obviously, since the dude isn't around anymore, but it does sound decidedly very Billy Preston-esque. So, I mean, there's a lot of things that this track does kind of harken back to all throughout it. Um, but that said, um, I don't know about those Joe Walsh parts. I mean, the Joe Walsh guitar work, I mean, that's kind of cool in it. I mean, it does sound very Eagles, which, I mean, obviously it's Joe Walsh, but, um, but his rapping throughout the song is like, can you not? <laughs> like, please, can we not be doing that? Ah, there's the other verse that I wanted to, <laughs> to mention here. So, the first two lines of it, guys. I got a woman, you know what I mean. I got the crackers, but she's got the cream. No, Ringo, I don't know what you mean. Please elaborate. Is this a really really strange euphemism that literally none of us have ever heard before or do you literally mean crackers and cream who eats crackers with cream like yeah it just there there is so many questions to be asked i i'm very confused i am very confused <laughs> oh my god okay so let me put it back on already have to stop again. Every morning when I open my eyes, my heart starts beating when I see her big smile. Ringo, that doesn't even rhyme! That doesn't even rhyme! Like, even with your accent, it doesn't rhyme. Okay. 
<sighs> back to it we go. Actually, no. I need to take a break in the middle of it again. And again with the Joe Walsh. Just remembered why it was that I took that break in the first place before coming back to it. To avoid that verse right there, because just, oh, it's so cringe. Everybody's on Facebook doing their thing. Nobody knows what the thing is. Tweeting up a storm. Yeah, they're crawling on the ground. Gotta get up to get down. If that is not the most boomer thing you've ever heard in your life, I don't know what is. I just... I cannot, I cannot turning it back on, but I think it's mostly just repeats of the chorus at this point, so let me go ahead and do that. I forgot that this song has a false ending to it. It sounds like it should be over. By all accounts, it should be over. And then, no, it starts back up for, like, another whole half a minute. Oh, dear God. Okay, we're gonna do this. Okay, now it's actually over, and just, it is a lot to take in, <laughs> especially as a millennial listening to that, I'm like, oh my god, why? I, I mean, I'm sure the Elder fans are gonna be like, ah, ah, see, that's the problem with you youth, because you're all so techno-obsessed, techno where... You, you don't even see the problems that they're trying to lay out in this song. It's like, oh, I see them. I just don't see the point for this song existing. I mean, I, I get it on one hand. On the other, I'm just like, Ringo, no. You know, for a dude who loves running his own Twitter, I mean, we, we all make memes of the way he tweets. Um, kind of interesting to bite the hand that feeds him, but okay. I mean, it's not like Twitter pays him, I don't think, anyway. But, um, anyways. Okay, so I mean, I hit stop and go so many times on this one to where now I'm tired. So, if I have a different outfit on when this continues, assume it is the next day. <laughs> I probably should have just waited till tomorrow to record this anyway, but there's still another nine tracks to go, so I'm like, I think I'm just gonna, you know, hit pause on this for tonight and come back to it in the morning. <laughs> okay, picking this up where I left off with the next song on the album, which is called It's Not Love That You Want, which I had to do a double take when I first saw the track listing of the album and saw this title, because I was like, Hold the phone. Didn't he already do a song with an almost identical title? And yeah, he did on Liverpool 8. He did If It's Love That You Want. But this one, It's Not Love That You Want. I'm like, Ringo, why are we contradicting ourselves here and writing songs with almost identical titles just to confuse us? 
Oh, that's right. I forgot. He likes to troll us. But, um, no, they are completely different songs. Actually, I really like this one. This one's probably one of my favorite ones on the album. Um, because despite face value of that title, it is not saying what the title makes it sound like it would be about. Um, I like the jangly guitar in it, kind of almost being like... Not quite a direct nod to Ticket to Ride, but there, there's some similar spirit to it, I feel like, even though it's a much harder rock guitar in it. But there's something about it in just the drum beat. Something about those two together, I don't know, it gives me Ticket to Ride vibes. But, um, I may be in the minority, but that's just me. But the lyrics of this one... I mean, the chorus is, it's not love that you want, yes, it's love that you need, give me love. It's like, oh, okay, I see, all right, I, okay, that makes more sense now. Um, but the lyrics are actually what really make me like this one. And again, first listen through just at face value, like taking in the general overall sound of the song, I didn't catch all of the words, but then reading them out, I was like, that's actually pretty profound for a Ringo song. Um, my guess is he probably wasn't the songwriter here, but that's okay. I am not judging. Um, it's kind of like a dealing with breakups song. So I'm like, oh, wow. Okay. Some days when you fall apart, waking up with a broken heart, you know you, or you've been there before, just don't know what to do. And when you're full of doubt, always looking for the easy way out, searching for love, but it's not but nothing's coming through. It never works out running away. You know you gotta stand up and face the day. It's not love that you want, but it's love that you need. Give me love. I'm like... Alright, I respect that. I respect that. And then the other verse in it is, When you're feeling that the sun don't shine, don't worry, we got plenty of time. All you can do is let that feeling go. You're not alone at the end of the day. There's always someone who can show you the way. Just reach out. It's always up to you. And then it repeats the, it never works out running away. You know, you gotta stand up and face the day and the chorus over and over a few more times. So I was just like, again, I, I wasn't really expecting something that profound from a Ringo album, but I actually really liked that one. And if what he said in a recent interview about this may be his final, like, full-length studio album. He may just be doing EPs where he releases, like, three songs at a time in the future is true. You know, honestly, I could see that format working for him, because usually, let's be real, his more recent albums have about three fairly strongish tracks to them, and the rest is more or less filler. I would hope this would be one of those three, because this... This is good. I like this a lot, actually. So, just saying, if, if there's tracks on this to check out, this would be one of them, guys. At least in my opinion. Okay, so the third track on the album, which we can tell by how teary-eyed I am even just realizing which track it is, is Grow Old With Me, which was not written by Ringo. This is why it's such an emotional thing to me. This was written by John during, um, it was on the Bermuda Tapes recordings, which apparently Ringo claims now in interviews that he was unaware of until recently, even though, um, th this was definitely used during the anthology in the 90s, and this song was even considered as one of the ones that they were possibly going to finish for John and include on it, but it wasn't to be at that point. Uh, they did Free as Bird and Real Love, and they were starting now and then and then never finished it. I'm still hoping that we see the day that Paul completes that track, but I mean, I'm not holding my breath. But this one was the fourth song that was on that cassette of John's that, in his handwriting, had written for Paul on it, which is part of why it makes me so emotional, but, um, this song has been long known of in the Beatle world, because I think, um, I believe the demo was released on Milk and Honey, if I'm not mistaken. I could be wrong on that. I'd have to double check, but 
that that track has long been known of and everything. So, I mean, this isn't like some secret unearthed thing that Ringo would like us to believe, but just the whole thing is beautiful and it's always been a tearjerker for me anyway, even just hearing it come from John and knowing that it was never completed, but hearing Ringo do it and that he completed it and he brought Paul on to do it <laughs> just makes me cry. Um, actually, this was one of the tracks that he released on YouTube before the album came out. Yeah, see, I'm, I'm doing it again, but, uh, trying to hold it together, but uh, I forget if he did it on John's birthday or the day after, but I know I was in Arizona when, um, when this track came out and like, I listened to it. And I just, like, lost it and was bawling. My sister was like, oh my god, what's wrong? I was like, no, 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 it's okay, it's okay. Just, and I tried to explain the whole thing to her, but, yeah, it's one of those things that, as a Beatle fan, you get it. If you're not, like, super ingrained in the fandom, you probably don't. But, <laughs> um, I don't know, it just, I get very, very emotional just about this song's existence in general, but hearing Ringo be the one to finish it, and to have Paul on the track. Yeah, I'm losing it a little bit. Uh, even this many years after John's been gone, that they still include him in their work. It's a really beautiful thing to me. And I mean, even if you look closely at the album cover itself, yeah, I'm like really choked up right now. Um, if you look at the album cover itself, you can see John, or not John, <laughs> Ringo has a little pin on his shirt that has John on it and everything. So he's still there. He's still a part of it. It's a really beautiful thing. Even before I heard Paul's vocals on the track, before I was even told that he was a part of it, I mean, I found that out after the fact. I went into it blind listening to it when it dropped on YouTube. I knew immediately that was Paul's bass right there on it. But then hearing his voice on it just... In a few spots. He didn't steal the spotlight or anything. He's just there and included, as he should be. I was like, I don't think I can even read the lyrics of this one without totally, totally losing it. But, um, like I said, this one's long been known of by the Beatle fandom, so y you all, if you're watching this, probably already know the song anyway, so I don't need to. If you don't, then go look it up. But then they released a lyric video on top of that, and they used John's handwritten lyrics in it. I was like, oh, you're just doing this to make us totally lose it, aren't you guys? Wow. Wow. So that, it was a very nice touch. I'm very glad that they did that. I'm very glad that YouTube allows these albums to be kind of a multimedia release kind of deal. But, um... <laughs> Yeah, like I said, I'm kind of losing it with this one, so I'm gonna hit stop here. Obviously, I love this track a lot. Um, I'm gonna recompose myself before coming back for the next one. Okay, so the fourth track on the album is called Magic. Um, this one I wasn't sure going in, is it a cover? Is it an original? I mean, that's a very ubiquitous title that a lot of people have used for a lot of different songs, all with the so same title. So I wasn't sure to expect a cover or an original here. I knew damn well that if it was like a cover of Michael Nesmith's solo song, Magic, I was gonna lose my damn mind, but of course it wasn't, because why would it be? But no, this actually was an original, and it's actually pretty cute. I like this one, too. I do like this one a lot. Like cards on the table. This one is the last one. And the one before. Actually, that's three out of four now that I actually have really liked. So I can't be that rough on this album. Now can I? No, I can't. But, um, the intro, it sounds like something and I can't put my finger on what it sounds like. I don't think it's even something of Ringo's. I don't even think it's necessarily a Beatle thing, but it sounds like something. And it's making me crazy trying to figure out what does it sound like. It sounds really familiar. I know that much. I know the, uh, the middle of the song in the guitar solo suddenly sounds like Queen, but, like, to the point where I would have sworn Brian May pl played on this, but it's not, and he didn't. 
It just sounds like it, but that's not what the intro sounds like, because I, after I had that realization, I went back to double check, I was like, is that what the intro sounds like? No, the intro doesn't sound like Queen either. What does it sound like? For real, if anybody can place what it sounds similar to, place it down below, because this has been making me absolutely crazy trying to place it. But anyway, the song in general is just like a cutesy little love song about two lovers who've been in love for a long time and they still are madly in love with each other. It's really cute, and there's not a whole lot else to say about it. But it's cute, and I like it, and musically it's good, and I have no complaints here. So, the only thing- actually, I shouldn't say no complaints, I do have one. I do have one. And it's a recurring theme through this album that- on certain tracks, it's more noticeable than others, but I think this is the first one where it feels, like, almost offensively... Offensively? Offensively noticeable. <laughs> I can talk, really. Um, the auto-tune situation. You knew we had to bring it up, but Ringo's voice throughout- just throughout the entire album is so heavily auto-tuned, and, I mean, you guys know from other reviews I've done in the past, I fucking hate auto-tune. Why anyone insists on using it, I don't know. I'm sure there's some practical application for it somewhere where it doesn't sound like ass, but this is not it. I just, ugh, this album would have been actually a hell of a lot better if he had not auto-tuned his freaking voice. I get that he was trying to go for a more modern feel, but it just came off as forced and as feeling like he's trying too hard by his using it so heavily through the whole thing. So, that is my only complaint with this song, and it is a recurring complaint through the whole thing, and especially on the next track, oh my god. If it weren't for that, maybe I would actually like that he covered the next track, but the fact that he used this so heavily and just what he did to it. I'm gonna go give it another listen now, but... Mmm, I have a lot of feelings on this one, fair warning. Okay, so, fifth track on the album, I can tell it's gonna be a very polarizing one, in that you're either gonna love it or you're gonna hate it, but I mean, I knew when I saw the track listing and I saw he had a title on there, Just Money, I was like, there's probably like a 90% chance that it is in fact a cover of That Money. I was not wrong. And I I am 100% aware that, true, the Beatles may not have written that song, that their version is the one I give a shit about. So, <laughs> um, I'm like, oh, Ringo, what did you do, my boy? So, I wanted to believe that maybe this'll be like with Vertical Man when he covered Love Me Do. Maybe it'll be okay. Within seconds, I knew this is not okay! Um... I mean, I don't know, what the shit, like, I saw an interview where he was talking about covering this, and he talked about he wanted to make it more modern, which, I guess you could say he did that, by auto-tuning the ever-loving shit out of it. Um, I don't really know what, uh, musical aesthetic he was going for, but... It was bizarre enough that there was, like, a whistle going in, like, the first seconds, but then, like, there's a guitar, the guitar's okay, but then in comes, like, this weird, like, warbly keyboard that sounds like something out of a Halloween movie, and I was like, the fuck is that? Um, the first few times I attempted to listen to it, I made it about 30 seconds in before I just was like, nope, and I walked away, I was like, I have to come back to it, I just... I can't. I fucking can't. Um, I played it to my mom. She made it to the exact same moment that I had every time I had listened to it at that point. And she was like, no, just no. <laughs> I was like, yeah, that. So, um, there's that. But I finally did listen to the whole thing and just... Whew. Ouch. Like I said, he wanted to modernize it, and, uh, like I said, the, the auto-tune, I assume, is what he meant by that. Um, 
there's less drums in it than the Beatle version, which I'm kind of bummed by because that was part of what I loved so much about the Beatle version was just the driving drum beat in that one. Just everything about the Beatle version. Honestly, that was like my favorite song on With the Beatles. So I'm just like, what did you do to it? Ringo, we have to have a talk. What did you do to it? But uh, <laughs> I realize he also has this hang up where he doesn't want anything he creates these days to sound too beatly, which I mean, okay, fair enough. I understand that. I get that. I get that he doesn't want to be, I don't think typecast is really the right word here, but I don't know what else to call it. I, I get that he doesn't want to be just a beetle for the rest of his life, and we get it, he's not, but I mean, he tries a little too hard sometimes to go the opposite direction, and everybody's just like, What the hell was that? <laughs> okay, um, we're just gonna sweep that under the rug and never speak of that again, but I mean... Oh, not a fine moment of mine, but as I listened to it the first time fully all the way through with my friend that I listened to the album all the way beginning to end with without stopping, uh, I think my exact quote was, oh my god, Ringo, never make another album again if it's gonna be like this. I just, I had a lot of feelings. I, I think I've calmed down some from that point, but oh my god, just no, no. I am not on board with this cover. If he had just covered it normally, I w it would probably be my favorite thing on the album, because again, that was like my favorite thing on With the Beatles, but yeah, I think it's safe to say he royally fuckered it up, but uh, yeah, I, I personally am not a fan of this cover, I just, I can't, I can't, I keep trying to force myself to like it, but it's one of those things where it's like, it's not happening. You can keep trying to fit a square peg into a round hole, but it's not happening. Oh, it's, I'm so conflicted, though, because I love their version of it so much, but his, I'm just like, I don't know how you ruined it this badly, dude, but, oh my god, put it back. <laughs> just, oh. I even tried listening to them back to back and then back again to see if maybe that would make it any better. No, no, that just makes me wish that it sounded closer to the original than it does, and it just does not. I get, again, that he does not want to sound like them. He wants to do his own thing, and yeah, he did his own thing, but I think there's a happy medium somewhere between these two polarities that would have been an appropriate zone for this cover, and just, oh my god, this it missed the mark. It missed the mark real bad, and I am the first one to admit it. Okay, apologies, I do have gum in my mouth now because I have serious dry mouth going on at the moment, but anyway, so track number six is called Better Days, and this one I really like too, so I think that so far, out of the ten tracks, we're six in, there have only been two that I was like, um, no, two, so that's that's already like, you know, an over 50% success rate so far, so, so far so good. This one's like... You know how Ringo has that little habit where he likes to write his autobiographical songs? I feel like that one is one of these for this album. The dead giveaway was the line about Monte Carlo and selling it all. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, it's one of those songs, all right. But um, it's another one of the harder rockers of the album, which I like. It does feel more... Just general classic rock feel to it, which, again, appeals to me more, even though, yeah, it does have the auto-tune on it, but it doesn't feel as obvious on this one for some reason, I don't know. But, um, in general, just the overall theme of the song is really positive, and I like it, and just, I don't know, you guys should check this one out, again, even if you're not a fan, I think you might dig this song, it's kind of cool, so... Like I said, I personally really, really like it, so there's that out of the album so far. I would say might be, like, my second favorite one, I think, but, um, that's just me. You, you could feel otherwise, so. Okay, so the seventh track on the album, kind of mediocre one. It's not terrible. It's not great. It's just kind of, uh, it's like fluffy 
filler material. Every Ringo album's got them. But this one's called Life is Good, which makes me laugh because the second cross stitch that I ever did was one that says Life is Good on it years ago. Years before the song was even written. I was like, ha! Ha <laughs> ha! So anyway, I've got an accidental Ringo cross stitch. So anyway, but <laughs> um, it's a very upbeat, positive song. But I mean, at the same time, it's just, it's okay. Not a whole lot to say about it, but I mean, I like its message. Um, as somebody who deals with depression a lot, uh, actually, the message of the song was like, you know, this is another one of those songs where I'm like, it may seem silly right now, but I could see myself pulling on that in rougher moments and just being like, he has a point. He has a point. Hang in there. But, um, yeah, it just... You know, with certain Ringo songs, you can tell the difference between the other ones. Or, I mean, there's certain ones where you can tell other people wrote them, and he's just singing them. And then there's the ones you can tell he wrote them, and he's singing them. I think this falls in the latter category. This sounds very much like a Ringo written song. Um, as I don't own a physical copy of the album yet, I can't check liner notes on that, but this is the vibe I get off of it after having pretty much literally every single Ringo album there is, I'm like, I'm pretty sure I have a good idea of which lyrical content is his and which isn't. But anyway, like I said, it's just, it's, it's honestly, it's kind of filler material on the album, if we're being 100% honest, but I do love the positive message of it. It is a cute song, it's a fluffy song. I don't dislike it, but I mean, I could see it also being one of those ones that probably gets quickly forgotten about in the mists of time of Ringo albums. I mean, he does have an awful lot of them, and a lot of his stuff has, for the most part, been forgotten, except by, like, the diehard fans. And even there, there is stuff that falls in that category, which, shameful to admit, I know, but just, I'm calling them as I see them. Moving on to the eighth track. Okay, so the eighth track on the album is called Thank God for Music, and this is another upbeat, perky song that, again, I wouldn't call it, like, the greatest songwriting of all time or anything, but, I mean, it's enjoyable, and it's another one of his autobiographical songs, admittedly, if you get far enough into it, but it's a cute song, though, and it kind of references how everybody's life is better for having music in it both his personally and just in general, everyone's is, and it's true. Um, I really like this song, so I mean, you know, we're eight tracks in, I think there have been, what, six tracks that I really liked, one that I was just meh about, and two that I disliked, so I mean, so far, that's, that's honestly a pretty good track record, we can't complain too hard here. Um, like I said, not the greatest, strongest album ever, but it's not bad. It's definitely listenable. Still two tracks to go, though, so let's talk about them. Before we do, I almost forgot I was going to mention about that song, that it was another one that kind of has that same vibe of feeling almost like Queen, kind of like, I think, general vibe of Night at the Opera kind of feel to it, but the outro music. It's not a direct steal, but it's very close to, like, the intro riff to Paperback Writer. I just thought it was worth mentioning that I did observe it, that there's a lot of little nods without being exact, but th they're there. They're there. Okay, so the second to last track on the album is called Send Love, Spread Peace, which I kept getting mixed up, and that's probably about the fifth time I have re-recorded that part, but I actually got it right this time. So, um, it goes without saying that, yes, that, that is the name of the charity that Ringo was doing with UNICEF earlier this year, so I'm kind of not surprised that he tapped into that and did a song with it, which, I mean, that's cool, and it's a very chill song, so it goes with the whole peace vibe, and I mean, it's Ringo. We've always got at least one peace and love song in the album somewhere, so it's the one this time. Um, overall, with this particular song... I could take it or leave it. It's not bad. It's not great. It's just, it's another one of the, it, it's a filler song just to flesh out an album. But, I mean, is it a good message? Sure. I, I cannot deny with that. Um, 
but at the same time, it's one of those things where I'm like, it's, it's just okay. Okay, so finally, the last track on the album is the title track, which I think was actually the first one to be released from the album that we got a sneak peek at, and that was what made me so skeptical in the first place, but I feel like the title track grew on me, because when I first listened to it, I was just like, what the hell? Mostly, not even because of most of the song, but because just the general feel of it, of the guitar, made it sound more like he's trying to be Billy Ray Cyrus than Ringo Starr, uh, which, I mean, he's always kind of had the I want to be a cowboy thing going on, so I shouldn't be that surprised by, but, um, like I said, it's grown on me, but it's definitely the quintessential autobiographical song on the album, like, well, with the title being what it is, just saying, I think we all knew that that was going to be the one, but, um, we even get a name drop of the other three Beatles in it, in like the first line, which is kind of nice, and the whole thing, it just, yeah, it, it's pretty good. Um, that said, the song may have grown on me, <laughs> but the music video they released for it is just so ADD. Like, I honestly tend to feel a little motion sick watching it because it moves so fast, and I'm like, could we slow it down just a hair? Just a hair. Not even the song, just just the video part. It moves way too quick for me. I just, I feel sick every time I try to watch it because it moves too fast. But that's me with anything like that that moves too fast. But but it's just like all over the place with the imagery. And I'm like, what the hell is going on? And I, and I find it really difficult to even focus on the song itself with that video. I'm like, they could have done better there. And it does make me a little sad because the actual little short video snippets they use of him in this kaleidoscope of Ringo's, and if you ever watch the video, go watch it, you will see exactly why I describe it that way. That is like the whole video is a kaleidoscope of Ringo's. But um, the little snippets, I bet it could have been like a really cute video if we could have like properly gotten to see those in not in such a mishmash hodgepodge ADD kind of fashion, you know? But, um, it is what it is. But it doesn't take anything away from the song itself. I just feel like the video kind of does detract from the music. So if you go to just, uh, well, there's the music video version and then there's just the audio only one, I would suggest first time listening to it, go to the audio only one first so you can like actually take the song in properly. Then watch the video because <laughs> I think it'll go much better for you if you do. But um, honestly, no, it, it has grown on me. I do like it, even if the whole chorus of it feels a little try hard, but um, but then again, it like I said, it is harkening back to what he has always done during his all-star shows, asking everybody, what's my name, and having a ready answer. It it just, it's a nice nod to that. I found it interesting that he ended the album on that song. I would have put it towards the beginning, but that's just me. But, um, I'm not the one who put it together, but... Like I said, it just... <clears throat> sorry. My throat. But, um... It's not bad. It's not bad. It did grow on me. Initially, I didn't think I liked it, but it did grow on me. I think that was true of a lot of the tracks, and I'm glad that I didn't just knee-jerk make this review on one listen only. I did go back and revisit it and played them each, for the most part, a few more times, minus that first track that I just, I cannot with, but most of them I have revisited, so... Um, that said, I don't know, I feel like I would probably give this album maybe even like a 7 out of a 10. Like, really, it's not bad. Even by Ringo standards, it's not bad. It's better than a lot of his albums have been, both recent and otherwise. <laughs> um, so I mean, if his whole claims of this might be his final album are true, you know, I I think I'd be okay with that. I mean, I felt like before that his last album he did would have been a good stopping point, but 
now that I've given this album a little more time to marinate in my ma in my mind and really just listen to it, th this wouldn't be a bad one to stop on either, although just selfishly I hope it's not the last one. Um, even if he does go his route of releasing EPs instead of full albums, you know, as long as he's still creating music in some form, we all know I'm gonna be happy. Even if sometimes I have to make fun of some of those tracks, you know, I, I'm still happy. We all know, ultimately, at the end of the day, I love Ringo. I always have since I was a tiny little kid. I'm sure I always will, so. <sighs> this sure was a long-winded review, even piecing it together a track at a time, but, um... Yeah, so, <laughs> 7 out of 10. It's not bad. It's not bad. And if you want to give it a listen without the commitment of buying it, it is on YouTube, it is on Spotify, you have options to listen to it for free in ways that aren't pirating it, he is still making money off of those plays, so if that helps you feel a little more okay with listening to it in that sense, there you go. So, anyways, that is it for this one. So, thank you for listening to my long-winded rambles for this whole album that took me over a day to record. Uh, if you like this video, go ahead and give it a like. If you're not already and you'd like to be, click subscribe, hit that notification bell icon. If you never want to miss an upload, uh, make sure to set it to all uploads if you never want to miss an upload. Uh, leave comments down below. Have you listened to the album? What are your thoughts? good, bad, or otherwise, I'm positive because it is Ringo, there's going to be a lot of trolls down in the comments and just bitchy comments. I I'm kind of expecting them. It kind of happens every time Ringo comes up. Um, but still, freedom of speech. I support your opinions no matter how you feel on them, good, bad, or otherwise. Leave them all down below. Uh, make sure you're following my social media accounts, my Twitter, my Instagram, my Facebook fan page, my Etsy, everything ammo. It's all down below. And if you like what I do here on this channel and you'd like to help support it, the donation link, as always, is down in the description. Get your name on the end cards for a month from the time of donating. Grab yourself some donator perks. Uh, anyways, in case you need to hear it today and you haven't heard it yet, I'm proud of you and I love you. Anyways, I need to seriously go wash this off my face. It has been on for over a day, so I can keep the aesthetic solid throughout the whole video. So I, I need to, like, go take a shower. So anyway, guys, I will see you next time. Bye-bye.